Praise the Lord Jesus. Last Sunday we concluded for this time our teaching on three kinds of knowledge. And then on Wednesday night, this last Wednesday night, we started a new one on three kinds of wisdom. Why is the world full of failures? The world is full of failures. Too many people who ended up on the sidewalk. Too many whose dreams never came to pass. The dreams never materialized. Too many who at old age were unhappy with their lives. But too many people all over the world who are looking to the government to make things better who are hoping that the economy will help them to prosper. But life is not that way. Haven't you read history? Life is not that way. No government will make you prosper. All the people that are ever getting there get in for themselves. And they forget about everybody else. Always remember that. God never put your future in the hands of any government. Well, there are too many people all over the world who think that their condition is caused by the government. Or they think it has to do with their nation, where they come from. Or the job that they're doing. Success is not based on any of those things. Success is based on one powerful word. It's called wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe I should read something to you. Just to think about it makes me excited. Turn to the book of Proverbs. Whew. Are you there? I want to read from Proverbs chapter number 4 and very quickly from verse now let me give you the background you know the book of Proverbs was written by Solomon right and uh, before Jesus came Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived he was so so wise God made him wise and you know, he made a wise decision when God spoke to him as a young man who had just ascended the throne. God said, what do you want me to do for you? Ask what you will. And he asked God for wisdom. Do you remember? Question, how did Solomon know that he should ask for wisdom? Why didn't he ask for the wrong thing? Why didn't he ask for anything else? And God also made that remark. He said, you didn't ask for long life. You didn't ask for the life of your enemies. You didn't ask for riches. You didn't ask for any of these things. He said, look, along with wisdom, I'll give you everything. Why did Solomon not ask for anything else? I want to show you. Proverbs chapter 4. 
So let me read it to you from verse 1. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attain to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender, and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Listen, what does it mean by I was my father's son? I mean, shouldn't that be some kind of tautology? No, it's not. He's explaining something that we ought to understand. When you study in the New Testament, you observe something we call the adopted son. Okay? The Greek word is heus. A son that has been raised to become a son. You get it? The one that's born a son, born a male son, is called technon. But when he's raised, he's called heus. So, this is what he's talking about here when he says, I was my father's son. In other words, I was my father's adopted son. Adopted, not, not in, the, in the way you talk about adoption today, and you know, you sign some papers, make some payment, get somebody to become your child. That's not what he's talking about. That's not the meaning of adoption. Now, the word adoption, when you study it in the, in the New Testament, um, refers to one that was trained. Usually, the king would give one of his sons to the governors, the elders, the instructors, the teachers, and say, train this son for me. And they would train him in military service, train him in all kinds and all forms of discipline and learning, because he's the one that his father wants to make the king. He didn't have to be the first son. The adopted son became the king. And you know Solomon was not his father's first son. He was not even the second. He was not the third. But he was the adopted son. He was raised to be a king. Are you there? So that's what he's saying here. He says, I was my father's son. Praise God. Okay, now let's observe something. It says, tender. In verse, verse 3. For I was my father's son, tender and only be beloved in the sight of my mother. He, my father, taught me also. Who was his father? David. He's talking about King David. He's talking about King David. He said, he taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. His father taught him. He's still telling us what his father said. Look at verse 5. His father told him, he said, get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not and she shall preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee. Listen, David told Solomon. Look at, look, at, look at verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. <laughs> King David told his son this. He said, look boy. Don't look at the palace even though I leave this for you. Don't look at the gold, even though I give this to you. Don't look at the silver. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. He said, with all I get in, get understanding. You know, some people go to church on a Sunday morning, listen to the word of God and say, well, I didn't understand what the preacher said. I didn't understand. And then they go away. He says, with all I get in, get understanding. I didn't understand. Well, I wasn't understanding, so I put it off. Understanding. How can you miss that? 
Didn't you hear what Jesus said about the, 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 the sower? He said, a sower went forth to sow. As he sowed, he said, some seeds fell by the wayside. And the birds of the air came and picked them up. He explained that parable. He said, those that fell by the wayside are the people who hear the, the, hear the word of God and do not understand. He said, and then Satan comes immediately and steal the word that was sown in their hearts. Why? Because they did not understand. So what should you do listen with all your attention don't miss anything people go to churches and they start counting the pillars and the, the fans and the looking around and thinking about all kinds of things and miss the whole stuff he says with all I get in get understanding he says wisdom is the principal thing hey Stop looking for money for your capital. He says the capital is wisdom. Wisdom is the capital. That's what you need. If you have it, look. Let's look at it. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at it. Here's what his father told you. Verse 8. Exalt her. Exalt what? Wisdom. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. Hey. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Are you hearing? Look at verse 13. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Instruction. Do you understand what he's talking about? When you're given an instruction, you're guided by inspired instruction. He says, do it. That's your life. The Bible says a child left to himself will come to ruin. He'll come to destruction. A child has left to himself. It's that way physically and it's that way spiritually. You are blessed to have somebody tell you what to do. You're blessed to have somebody teach you. You're blessed. There are lots of Christians People who have given their hearts to Christ, they don't have anybody teach them anything. Some of them go to churches on Sunday, sit down there and listen, listen and listen. They don't get nothing. There's no teaching of the Word of God. They sing and go back home. Only to feel good. Some people say, oh, I like dancing on Sunday. That's what I, I just want to dance. Oh, 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 oh. Dance and sweat and sweat. Say, oh, today's service. Oh, it was wonderful. What happened? Did you learn anything? Ah, I dance, I dance. Hey, I worship God with all my strength. Hey! <laughs> Ignorance gone on rampage. In the New Testament, they don't worship him with all their strengths. All the fleshly dance doesn't mean anything to God in the New Testament. He says, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in reality. We'll come to that. Hallelujah. Turn to chapter 8, book of Proverbs. Listen to what wisdom is saying here. From verse 1, doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way, in the places of the parts. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. Wisdom is talking. 
Oh, how many people ignore the voice of wisdom? When wisdom calls, they don't listen. Wisdom cries. They don't listen and they wonder why there's poverty. They wonder why there's hunger. They wonder why there's failure. Because men are not listening to the voice of wisdom. No, I'm not talking about the wisdom of this world. No, I'm not talking about the wisdom of men. I'm talking about the wisdom of God. And that wisdom does not come from classes in the university. It doesn't come from the laboratory. It doesn't come from all the books of this world. The wisdom of God is given by God. Hallelujah. And that wisdom says, I'm crying, I'm calling out to you, oh man. And my voice to the sons of men, look at verse 5. Oh, ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. And the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth. And wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing foul or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth. And writes to them that find knowledge. Hallelujah. He says, receive my instruction and not silver. Hey. Knowledge rather than choice gold. He says, listen, receive my instruction. Not, not silver. Receive knowledge rather than precious gold. Wisdom is the principal thing. All right, look at verse, verse 11. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to her or to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the proud mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine. Wisdom is talking. He says, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign. And princes decree justice. By me, princes rule. And nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. Those that seek me early. Don't wait till you're too old to talk. Call now. Verse 18. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. <laughs> riches, honor. He says durable riches. That means lasting riches and righteousness. Somebody said you cannot be rich and righteous together. Look at this now. Look at it now. Look at it now. He says durable riches and righteousness. Oh. Ah. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause hey, I, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Hmm. Okay, now you understand what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Wisdom, wisdom. Tell somebody wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. 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 wisdom the wisdom of God the Greek word is Sophia wisdom Sophia Sophia when God talks about Sophia he's dealing with excellent things I want us to turn for a moment to the book of Colossians You ready? 
I want to look at uh, verse 9, chapter 1. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all Sophia and spiritual understanding. And that, <laughs> glory to God, that spiritual understanding there, the word is synesis. But we'll come to that. Okay? He says, the knowledge of his will in all wisdom. Sophia, in all wisdom. What does it mean? I said we're talking about three kinds of wisdom. That's our subject. The first kind of wisdom is Sophia. What type of wisdom is Sophia? First, I want us to read something here. In chapter 2, book of Colossians. I'm reading from verse 1. For I will that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. A very long verse, right? And sometimes you lose the meaning of it. But here's what I want to read to you. He says, Christ, Christ, verse 3, in whom I hid. I want you to read the rest of it. I'm not sure you heard it. He says, Christ, in whom I hid, in whom I deposited. All the treasures, not some, but all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. He says, All the treasures of wisdom. What is wisdom? What is Sophia? What is he talking about when he refers to the wisdom of God? You can write it down. He's talking about insight into reality. He's talking about insight in all learning. Science. Insight in all learning. He's talking about insight into hidden things. Do you understand? Insight into hidden things, including enigmatic and symbolic language. Do you understand? Things that are difficult to understand. Things that men have difficulty. They have difficulty unraveling. Let me show you this. Go to Daniel chapter 5. So you, you, you begin to understand what we're talking about here. Daniel chapter 5. Daniel chapter 5. When you have Sophia. Oh. Listen, remember what we read. He said, in Christ are hid all the treasures. Oh my goodness. Listen. God... God hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Christ. And did you notice he didn't say Jesus? Did you notice he didn't say that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in Jesus? He said they are in Christ. Who is Christ? There is no Christ today without the church. There is no Christ without Jesus. Jesus is the head. 